Welcome to my channel, Travel Guide. If you are planning to visit Sweden, this video will give you a complete travel guide including things to see, accommodation, food, money-saving tips, where to stay, how to get around, when to visit, and how to stay safe in Sweden. There's a lot to do here, and the people are really welcoming the tourists. There are medieval cities, beautiful islands, tons of castles, the northern lights, a growing foodie scene, friendly people, incredible art, amazing hiking opportunities, and a super high quality of life. Countries' high prices scare budget travelers. You must watch this video till the end if you like this video. Please subscribe the channel. Let's start the video. Number 1. Things to see and do in Sweden Explore Stockholm. From the museums to nightlife, there's so much to do in Stockholm that you'll never get bored. Enjoy the picturesque harbor, charming old town, beautiful parks, and everything in between. I recommend spending at least three days here. Catch the Midsummer Festival Swedes celebrate the summer solstice with a giant party. They dance around a maypole, eat, drink, and enjoy nature. Every municipality in the country organizes events, so be sure to find some locals who can show you around. It's the biggest party of the year. Visit Gotland. This island is a popular place for Swedes to visit during the summer. The main town, Visby, is a medieval walled city that is incredibly beautiful to wander around. July is the most popular month, so book accommodation in advance. Hike the King's Trail. This 440-kilometer trail stretches through some of the most remote and pristine landscapes in the country. It takes around one month to hike the entire trail, though it is broken up into week-long or day-hike sections. Brave the Cold in Lapland Lapland, in the far north, is where the Sami, Sweden's indigenous people, continue to make their home and where you can see reindeer, do some skiing, and experience the Arctic North. Head here for an unexplored part of the country with a lot of cultural significance. Partake in Fika Fika is Sweden's way of slowing down. Coffee, conversation, and a few baked goods, often cinnamon buns, are an important part of the social fabric in Sweden, allowing friends and colleagues to take a break from the day-to-day -day and just relax. Stay in the Ice Hotel Located up north in Jekasjervi, the Ice Hotel is a hotel built during the winter months out of ice. There's an ice bar, an ice dining room, and an ice bed with big fur blankets. Be prepared to pay the price for a unique stay like this, as nights cost upwards of 5,500 Swedish krona. The hotel is also open for tours, allowing visitors to explore the impressive construction and design. A day pass to the hotel complex costs 300 Swedish krona depending on the season. The hotel has regular rooms as well in an adjacent building, which only costs 1,700 krona per night. Tour the Stockholm Archipelago Take a boat around different islands that surround Stockholm. During the summer, they become big attractions for locals as they boat around and spend nights on the tiny islands. You can take a day tour or just spend a few nights on some of the islands. It's super peaceful and relaxing, and one of my top things to do during the summer. Visit Gothenburg. Gothenburg is Sweden's second largest city. It sees a fraction of tourists compared to Stockholm, so come here to beat the crowds, walk along the cobblestone pedestrian streets of Haga, window shop along the Avenin, and visit Leisberg, one of the biggest theme parks in Scandinavia. The city has a much more laid-back vibe than Stockholm and offers plenty of nearby hiking, swimming, and other outdoor activities. Explore the Bohuslän coast. This beautiful coast is home to over 8,000 islands and almost 300 kilometers of coastline. The region is known for its fishing, swimming, and hiking, and is one of the best spots in the country to get fresh seafood. There is also a UNESCO rock carving site in Tanumshid, with carvings and paintings dating back to the Bronze Age and Iron Age. Go skiing. Scandinavians love their winter sports. One of the most popular ski resorts in the region is R, 
which lies 80 kilometers from Ostersund and around 600 kilometers north of Stockholm. The highest peak at the resort is over 1,400 meters. Daily trains run to the area from Stockholm. Lift tickets are generally around 600 krona. Other areas that are great for skiing are Salen, Vemdelen, and Branas Salen and Branas are the two southernmost options, though all are still several hours north of Gothenburg and Stockholm. Visit Uppsala. Uppsala is a quiet university town about 25 minutes from the Arlanda airport and an hour away from Stockholm by train. It's filled with quirky shops, picturesque waterways, lovely parks, and beautiful bike trails. A lot of what's here is centered around the university, from the vast library, home to more than 5 million volumes, to the Museum of Evolution, which boasts over 5 million zoological, botanical, and fossil specimens, to the Linnean Gardens. You should definitely tour the university when you visit, too. Celebrate Valborg Day. Held on April 30th, this annual festival serves to welcome spring. It's characterized by huge bonfires, even bigger parties, and is a tradition dating back to the Middle Ages. Municipalities organize events, including the massive bonfires, and many locals also host their own parties. Visit Kosterhavet National Park. Kosterhavet is a marine park located on and around the Koster Islands which are located two hours north of Gothenburg. It's the country's first marine park and home to Sweden's only coral reef, as well as over 6,000 marine species, many of which don't exist anywhere else in the country. The park spans almost 400 square kilometers, and the islands are beautiful. Rent some bikes to get around and enjoy the rugged landscape and the wildlife that call it home. There's a large seal colony here too. You can access the islands via the local ferry. Return tickets are 140 krona. Visit the Vasa Museum. This is hands down a must-see museum in Stockholm. It houses the famous Vasa ship, which sank right as it set sail in the harbor in 1628 due to being too heavy to float. The cold sea kept the ship intact, so much so that it even has the original paint. The museum does a wonderful job of putting the ship into the historical context of the 17th century and Sweden's Golden Age. There are English guided tours too. Admission is about 180 Swedish krona. Let Loose at Lysberg. Located in Gothenburg, this is the biggest amusement park in Scandinavia. There are roller coasters, a haunted house, tons of rides for kids, and a giant Ferris wheel with stunning views of the city. Concerts by popular artists are common here too, and it gets a huge transformation for Halloween and Christmas. Admission is 95 krona, while admission and unlimited rides are 255 krona. See the Northern Lights. The Northern Lights, also known as the Aurora Borealis, light up the skies of Scandinavia each winter, drawing thousands of visitors to witness the spectacle. The best time to see the lights is from late September to late March from around 9 p.m. to 2 a.m. You'll want to travel north to the sparsely populated Lapland for the best chance to see the lights. You can't really see them in southern Sweden. Visit Drottningholm Palace. Located just 30 minutes outside of Stockholm, this 17th century palace is the most well-preserved palace in all of Sweden. Modeled after the Palace of Versailles, the UNESCO-listed complex includes ornate gardens, a theater, a Chinese pavilion, and elaborately decorated interiors. It is the official private residence of the Swedish royal family and is only open on weekends. Admission is 170 krona, including a guided tour in English. Experience the Gota Canal. This 19th century waterway connects a system of lakes and rivers from the Baltic Sea in the east to Gothenburg in the west. The canal is 190 kilometers long and has 47 bridges and 58 locks. You can enjoy the canal via guided tour, by renting your own boat, or by cycling down the top paths lining the banks. The canal is open from May to the end of September. Number 2. Sweden Travel Costs Accommodation Accommodation, like everything in Sweden, 
is not cheap. Postels start around 2250 Swedish krona per night for a dorm and about 650 krona for a private room. Most hostels in Sweden also add a 40 to 80 krona surcharge for bed linen to offset the cost of cleaning. You can bring your own sheets, but sleeping bags are not allowed. Budget hotels cost around 700 to 900 krona per night. Cheaper options are available, however, they usually necessitate sharing a bathroom with other guests. Read the fine print so you're not surprised. Expect free Wi-Fi, a TV, and a coffee maker in most budget hotels. Wild camping is a good budget option as it is legal and free to camp almost anywhere in Sweden. Sweden has freedom to roam laws that allow anyone to camp anywhere for one night, even if it's private property. You need to make sure you are not camping near someone's house, that you take all trash with you when you leave, and that you aren't in a farmer's field or garden. But other than that, you can pretty much throw your tent anywhere. If wild camping is not your thing, campgrounds are also common, though many require a camping key or a card. You can purchase it at your campsite or online for 160 krona. Most campsites have modern facilities, including toilets and showers. Expect most plots to cost around 200 krona per night. Food. Food in Sweden is hearty and based heavily on meat, fish, and root vegetables. One of the most iconic and popular dishes is meatballs and a creamy sauce with potatoes and lingonberry jam. Crayfish, shrimp, mushrooms, and fresh summer berries are other popular staples. For breakfast, Swedes usually eat dark bread with cheese and vegetables. For fika, cinnamon buns are the go-to choice for many. Eating out is expensive in Sweden. You can get cheap food from outdoor street vendors starting at 50 krona, though they are few and far between. You can get hot dogs for around 30 krona at places like 7-Eleven and Presbyterian. Your best bet for cheap food is Thai and Middle Eastern restaurants. You can usually find meals for around 65 krona. Thai restaurants have large portions too, which means you can sometimes get an extra meal from the leftovers. Lunch buffets are another good budget-friendly option. Buffet prices are around 100 Swedish krona, but you can fill up and get your money's worth. Many convenience stores and cafes offer pre-packaged sandwiches and meals for 50 to 100 krona if you're on the go and want a quick bite. Whole pizzas cost around 65 to 95 krona, and most nice sit-down restaurant meals begin at 200 krona for a main dish. The cheapest grocery store chain is Willie's, though ICA and Little also have good deals as well. Grocery shopping here costs around 600 to 700 Swedish krona per week. However, if you cut down on your meat and cheese intake, you can lower your costs significantly. Number 3. Backpacking Sweden's Suggested Budgets On a backpacking budget, you should plan to spend around 775 krona per day. On this budget, you're staying in a hostel dorm or camping, cooking your own meals, using public transportation, and participating in cheap activities like visiting museums, hiking, or taking free walking tours. On a mid-range of budget of 1,600 krona per day, you can stay in private hostel rooms, eat out more, drink a bit, take guided tours, and visit a wider range of activities. On a luxury budget of 2,200 krona or more per day, you can afford to stay in a hotel, hire a rental car, eat out for every meal, and do as many activities as you want. You can use the chart below to get some idea of how much you need to budget daily, depending on your travel style. Keep in mind, these are daily averages. Some days you'll spend more, some days you'll spend less. I just want to give you a general idea of how to make your budget. Number 4. Money-Saving Tips There are plenty of ways to save your money while you're in Sweden. Some tips to save money are Book in advance My trip to the Stockholm train station taught me that travel around Sweden is expensive when you are booking only a day or two beforehand. Booking trains or buses three to four weeks in advance can get you around 40 to 50% off. Flixbus, SJ, and MTR are the major companies to consider, 
with MTR being the cheapest train company. Flixbus is a budget-friendly option, as well if you'd rather take the bus over the train. Bring a refillable water bottle. The tap water in Sweden, as in all of Scandinavia, is perfectly drinkable. In fact, tap water in Sweden is often cleaner than bottled water. Bring a refillable water bottle and save your money and the environment. To make sure your water is extra safe, bring a life straw. They have built-in filters and are perfect for traveling. Purchase a city tourism card. These tourist passes give you access to a city's public transportation system and free entrance into 99% of the museums and attractions. If you plan on seeing the majority of attractions and museums, one of these cards will save you money. Savings will vary depending on how much you use the card. The Stockholm Pass, for example, includes access to 60 attractions for just 6.69 krona for a one-day pass and 9.89 krona for a two-day pass, which is the much better choice as there is a lot to see. Skip the restaurants. Eating out in Sweden is very expensive, especially if you are going to a sit-down restaurant. If you want to eat out, stick to the outside food vendors you see on the street. You can find a decent variety, and they are only about 65 krona per meal. You can also get cheap hot dogs and sausages for about 30 krona. If you're craving takeout, stick to Thai and Middle Eastern food, as they are usually the cheapest. Go for the buffet. Lunch is the best time to eat out in Sweden. Buffets and restaurants have set meals for around 100 krona. It's the best deal you can find and one utilized a lot by locals. Don't miss Hermitage in Stockholm for a cozy, home-cooked meal. Avoid clubs. Most clubs have a 250 krona or more cover. Don't waste your money. Get a metro card. Each region of Sweden has its own public transportation operator and transportation cards will include buses, trams, subways, and boats. Prices will vary for each region, so be sure to inquire when you arrive. If you will be in a city for a few days, be sure to grab a tourist pass. At 415 krona for a week's worth of train rides in Stockholm or 210 krona for three days of buses in Gothenburg, these cards definitely save you money. Check for deals. When you're shopping for groceries, check the flyer first and pay attention to what's on sale. It's not a cool way to save, but by paying attention to what's on sale, you can likely save yourself a few kroner. Number 5. Where to stay in Sweden Hostels are not all that plentiful across Sweden, mostly available in the three main cities of Stockholm, Gothenburg, and Malmö. Outside the big cities, you'll likely need stay in budget guest houses or use errand. Here are my recommended places to stay while you're in Sweden. City Backpackers Stockholm. Skanstols Hostel Stockholm. Slotskogen Hostel Gothenburg. Backpackers Goatboard Gothenburg. Hotel and Hostel Malmo City Malmo. Number 6. How to get around Sweden. Public transportation. Public transportation in Sweden is incredible. You can not only use it to explore the cities, but also the countryside and less visited towns and villages as well. Tickets vary in each region and are usually based on how far you travel. A single fare ticket in Gothenburg costs around 28 krona, though you can also take a public bus, and then a ferry from Gothenburg out to many of the nearby islands for around 120 krona. The public transportation in Stockholm is 38 krona per ticket, making the day past your best choice. Most cities have an app you can download to manage and pay for your tickets. No one will inspect your ticket when you board, but there are roaming ticket checks, and if you get caught without paying, you'll be fined hundreds of dollars. Intercity buses. Buses booked a month or more in advance can be found for as cheap as 80 krona. However, those tickets are limited in number, and typically buses cost 225 to 405 Swedish krona. The eight-hour trip from Stockholm to Malmö generally costs 280 to 370 krona, while the 6.5-hour trip from Stockholm to Gothenburg is around 250 to 340 krona. 
For the cheapest prices, use Flixbus. If you are arriving at an airport, Flagbus Sarna is the main shuttle company, with tickets around 119 SEK from major airports to the nearest downtown. Trains. Most intercity trains cost 350 to 700 krona, though tickets for as low as 185 krona can be found for routes between Stockholm and Gothenburg, a journey which takes between three to four hours when booked in advance. Overnight trains, like the 15-hour trip from Stockholm to Lulia, cost between 700 to 1200 Swedish krona per person. The Arlanda Express, the train from Stockholm's Arlanda Airport to the Central Station, is 299 krona for a one-way ticket. The journey takes around 20 minutes, while the bus takes closer to 45 minutes and costs 119 krona. Car rental. You can rent a car in Sweden for around 500 krona per day. Just keep in mind that the majority of the cars here are manual, so you need to be able to drive stick. With efficient public transportation and plenty of intercity bus and train options, I would suggest against renting a car unless you're planning to do a road trip. Driving in the cities isn't the most fun and parking is very expensive. Flying While distances in the south are short enough for comfortable train and bus rides, if you're heading up north a plane is more convenient. Flights from Stockholm to Karuna start at around 700 krona for the 4-hour flight. If you're short on time, the flight from Stockholm to Gothenburg takes just under an hour and usually costs around 400 krona. Number 7. When to visit Sweden The ideal time to visit Sweden is between June to August, when the weather is warm and the days are really long. The country is at its liveliest during this time, and you will find locals taking advantage of the good weather at every opportunity. The parks are always full, and there are always fun events happening around town. Temperatures are often in the 20 degrees Celsius during the summer months. The downside to visiting then is that, since Sweden has a very short summer, the cities can get busy so be sure to book your accommodation in advance. This is especially true if you are visiting during Midsommar, the big Swedish holiday at the end of June. It's a great time to experience Swedish traditions. May typically has great weather with occasional rain, while September offers cooler temperatures and changing leaves. You'll beat the crowds and still be able to explore the city on foot without the weather getting in your way. Attractions begin to close around late September, and the days get dark early in October. Temperatures start dropping around this time too. However, prices also decrease, and you're likely to find cheaper airfares and accommodations during this time. Be sure to pack layers if you plan on visiting during this time of year. The winter is very cold and sees a lot of snow and darkness. In the depths of the winter, you only get a few hours of light each day and temperatures plummet below zero degree. The plus side of traveling during the off-season, however, is that you'll get the cheapest accommodations and fees for certain attractions will be lower as well. While Stockholm is particularly beautiful in winter, you won't want to be walking around as much in the cold. Since it's a great city to explore on foot, you will potentially be missing out so I'd skip a winter visit unless you're coming to enjoy winter sports. Number 8. How to stay safe in Sweden Sweden is one of the safest countries in the world. In fact, it ranks 15th on the ranking of the world's safest countries. It's a great destination for solo travelers, including solo female travelers. Taxes are quite safe and crime is rare against travelers. But keep your wits up and never travel alone at night if you've been drinking, just to be safe. As in any larger city, it's a good idea to keep an eye out for pickpockets, especially around the train stations and on public transportation. And as always, never leave your drink unattended when out at the bar. If you do experience an emergency, dial 112 for assistance. Always trust your gut instinct. Make copies of your personal documents, including your passport, and ID forward your itinerary along to loved ones so they'll know where you are. The most important piece of advice I can offer is to purchase good travel insurance. Travel insurance will protect you against illness, injury, theft, 
and cancellations. It's comprehensive protection in case anything goes wrong. I never go on a trip without it as I've had to use it many times in the past.